Time that is moved by little fidget wheels is not my time, the flood that does not flow. Between the double and the single bell of a ship's hour, between a round of bells from the dark warship riding there below, I have lived many lives, and this one life of Joe long dead who lives between five bells. Deep and dissolving verticals of light ferry the falls of moonshine down. Five bells coldly rung out in a machine's voice. Night and water pour to one rip of darkness. The harbour floats in the air. The cross hangs upside down in water. Why do I think of you, dead man? Why thieve these profitless lodgings from the flukes of thought anchored in time? You have gone from the earth, gone even from the meaning of a name. Yet something's there. Yet something forms its lips and hits and cries against the ports of space, beating their sides to make its fury heard. Are you shouting at me, dead man, squeezing your face in agonies of speech on speechless pains? Cry louder, beat the windows, bawl your name. But I hear nothing, nothing, only bells, five bells, the bumpkin calculus of time. Your echoes die, your voice is doused by life. There's not a mouth can fly the pygmy straight. Nothing except the memory of some bones long shoved away and sucked away in mud. And unimportant things you might have done. Or once I thought you did, but you forgot. And all have now forgotten. Looks and words and slops of beer. Your coat with buttons off. Your gaunt chin and pricked eye and raging tales of Irish kings and English perfidy and dirtier perfidy of publicans groaning to God from Darlinghurst. Five bells. Then I saw the road, I heard the thunder tumble and felt the talons of the rain. The night we came to Moorbank in slab dark, so dark you bore no body, had no face, but a sheer voice that rattled out of air, as now you'd cry if I could break the glass. A voice that spoke beside me in the bush, loud for a breath or bitten off by wind, of Milton, melons and the rights of man, and blowing flutes and how Tahitian girls are brown and angry-tongued, and Sydney girls are white and angry-tongued, or so you'd found. But all I heard was words that didn't join, so Milton became melons, melons girls, and fifty mouths, it seemed, were out that night. And in each tree an ear was bending down, or something that had just run, gone behind the grass, when blank and bone white like a maniac's thought, the naphtha flash of lightning slit the sky, knifing the dark with deadly photographs. There's not so many with so poor a purse or fierce a need must fare by night like that, five miles in darkness on a country track. But when you do, that's what you think. Five bells. In Melbourne, your appetite had gone, your angers too. They'd been leached away by the soft archery of summer rains and the sponge pores of wetness, the slow damp that stuck the leaves of living, snailed the mind and showed your bones. They'd had been sharp with rage. The sodden ecstasies of rectitude. I thought of what you'd written in faint ink, your journal with the sawn-off lock that stayed behind with other things you left, all without use, all without meaning now, except a sign that someone had been living who was now was dead. At Labassa, room six by eight on top of the tower, because of this very dark and cold in winter, everything had been stowed into this room. Five hundred books, all shapes and colours, dealt across the floor and over sills, and on the laps of chairs, guns, photos of many different things, and different curios that I obtained. In Sydney, by the spent aquarium flare of penny gaslight on pink wallpaper, we argued about blowing up the world, but you were living backward, so each night you crept a moment closer to the breast. And they were living, all of them. Those frames and shapes of flesh that have perplexed your youth, and most your father, the old man gone blind, with fingers always round a fiddle's neck, that graveyard mason whose fair monuments and tablets, cut with dreams of piety, rest on the bosoms of a thousand men, staked bone by bone, in quiet astonishment at cargoes they had never thought to bear, these funeral cakes of sweet and sculptured stone. Where have you gone? The tide is over you, the turn of midnight waters over you, 
as time is over you and mystery and memory the flood that does not flow you have no suburb like those easier dead in private births of dissolution laid the tide goes over the waves right over you and let their shadows down like shining hair but they are water and the sea pinks bend like lilies in your teeth but they are weed and you are only part of an idea I felt the wet push its black thumbles in the night you died I felt your eardrums crack and the short agony the longer dream the nothing that was neither long nor short but I was bound and could not go that way but I was blind and could not feel your hand if I could find an answer could only find your meaning or could say why you were here who now are gone what purpose gave you breath or seized it back might I not hear your voice? I looked out my window in the dark at waves with diamond quills and combs of light that arched their mackerel backs and smacked the sand in the moon's drench, that straight enormous glaze, and ships far off asleep, and harbour boys tossing their fireballs wearily each to each, and tried to hear your voice. But all I heard was a boat's whistle and the scraping squeal of seabirds' voices far away and bells five bells, five bells coldly ringing out, five bells.